Shalom, shalom. I'm going to start by giving infinite honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles who teach and rule well. Shalom to the Akim and Aguapim out there learning along, doing your due diligence and making your calling election sure. And I'm out once again to, to prophesy the downfall of the current captivity that we're living in, that people know to be as America, but we know it through the interpretation of the scripture to be the virgin daughter of Babylon. And I'm also, I'm also out to call you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians to turn away from your sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness and to seek the Lord while he may be found. And as we know, the government that people rely on are about to roll out and start trying to force implement their jab or their one-two uppercut, their combo, and try to, try to get you to take their poison that they're trying to force on the people for, for, for uh, uh, it could be a, a burger and some fries. It could be, be all types of things that they try to uh, incentivize you to cause you to take their poison. And once you take that, once you take that poison, once you take that inoculation and, and defile your temple, you know, we have the information to tell you what's in that poison. But once you do that, you make yourself susceptible to all types of, 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 of spiritual of spiritual attacks. We know that they got uh I'll call it ticks. I'll call it micro ticks. You know that they got micro ticks inside of their inside of their uh, different potions that they try to use to, to infiltrate your system. So once you take that once you take that vaccination, they could they could uh, uh, they could see the, the your body temperature. They could see your, your your heart rate. They could see all types of different systems in your body once you take that vaccine. But yet they tried to rush everybody into taking it as if there was really a pandemic out. They tried to, to use a scare tactic to get everybody to take the, the, the poison that they're pushing on the city. When our Lord tells us that we're not even supposed to be piercing our skin. And this is why we're out to let you, to let you Israelites mainly know where you're going off and upsetting the Lord. So we're not supposed to be piercing our skin. We're not supposed to be getting any tattoo markings on our skin. We're not supposed to be eating any pork, shellfish, or crab, according to the dietary law, which does not change. When our Lord told us it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, it's what comes out, he was talking about spiritual food. So your belief system. But yet they use the scriptures and try to justify it as a means for them to do as they want. Matthew, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8. I started Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which is what we're sent out to do now. We're letting you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians know that you have a place of repentance to ask the Lord for forgiveness. 
and that our Lord is coming back. Shalaki, y'all. Our Lord is coming back to pour out his indignation or his anger on those who, that do not hearken to his word. Y'all bear with me for a second. Our Lord tells us, you shall destroy the sinners off the face of the earth. So he's not coming back to sing Kumbaya with a bunch of wicked people. He's coming back to destroy people. But yet, because people have been consuming the foul food with their vain teachings, their deception, they have misled many people into thinking that our Lord is coming back to bring peace. When he tells us, when he tells us very clearly, do not think that I have come to that I am coming to bring peace, but division, but a sword. So people are gonna receive the exact opposite of what they think because they've been taught different commandments by man. As I was saying though, our Lord tells us not to prick our skin. Our Lord tells us not to eat pork, not to eat shellfish, lobster, crab, not to eat any bottom feeders. But yet you still have rebellious Israelites who don't hearken to the word of the Most High. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Therefore, thus says the therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the commandment of men. So they people have, have instead of them seeking the Lord themselves, they've relied on what a man told them. They've relied on what a what a what a, a man who's just looking for a check has told him. These pastors in these churches, these 
wicked Israelites that are making camps to deceive people? This is Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 11. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a den of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. You look at the current state of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Seminole Native Indians, there's, there's a, a, a small remnant that actually have an understanding of how we're supposed to carry ourselves. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken and that he may declare it, why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness so that none, so that no one can pass through? You can't go through the city without seeing somebody that's part of the alphabet community, the alphabet abomination. You can't go through the city without seeing some type of wickedness. All the, all, uh, across all states, they push their abominations, their wickedness into the communities and everything that, that is in the community goes against the scripture. Everything that you see nowadays is off. How you doing? And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. So the reason that we see the cities in the state that they're in, is because they've forsaken the law of the Heavenly Father. But ultimately we know that that's because our oppressors are ruling over us. Who's the so-called white man? This is Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 25. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. We know a real, a real so-called uh, uh, role model, and that was his saying. MLK, I have a dream. Well, that dream is going to lead to your destruction, as well as the people who follow his teachings. One of the things that MLK said before he died is it felt like he led his people into a burning house. And ultimately he did. But though that wasn't his will. That was the will of the Most High. But the message that he was preaching, everybody come together, everybody integrate, ultimately that goes against the scripture. The Lord created the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and some of the Native Indians to be a holy people, separate, separate from all the other peoples of the earth. The holy people separate from all the other peoples on the earth. And there's several accounts through the scriptures of when our people came to the realization that we're not supposed to integrate with these other nations. Nehemiah. Shalaki. Ezra, the book of Ezra chapter 10, and the title of this chapter reads, Confession of Improper Marriage. I started Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. When these things were done, the leaders came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jubites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for them, for themselves, and their sons so that the holy seed is mixed with the people of the land indeed the hand of the leaders and the rulers 
have been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and my robe and plucked out some of my beard hairs. So I can plucked out some of, of the hair of my head and beard and sat down astonished. So even in ancient days, we weren't supposed to be mixing in with the other nations. But because of leaders that mislead our people, like MLK, our people have been misled. I have heard what the prophet said, have said who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long would this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal, or false powers. And that's something you see today as well. Them trying to make all these agendas Black Lives Matter, Asian Lives Matter. That's them trying to make everybody feel as though they have an importance to play in the community and strengthening the community, so to say. So they're trying to empower people to be a part of some type of organization or some type of movement. Who do you think is running these different movements? The so-called white man. The same people that put our people in slavery. of these other nations. But our Lord told us in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4 that he would strip us of our heritage. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5 These twelve Yahweh sent out and commanded saying do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which is what we're sent out to do in today's day and time. We're not sent out to get comfortable in the city. We're not sent out to go and kick it at the little, the little uh, 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 festivals. We're not sent out to, to get comfortable and try to integrate with the people around us. Back to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1. In those, in those days John the Baptist came in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And verse 8. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not think to say that to yourselves we have Abraham as our father for I say to you, 
that the Most High can, is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the ax is laid at the root of the trees, therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And we know that that fire is coming uh, quicker and quicker by way of ICBM missiles, thermonuclear missiles. These other countries are gearing up for war and they can't wait to let their artillery off on America. But you have so-called Negroes, Latinos, Seminole Native Indians, you Israelites out there who think that you could get comfortable in the land where our forefathers were slaughtered. To think that you could get comfortable around the people who killed our families, separated our communities, destroyed us as a people. Even when we tried to build on our own, what, do you, what did you see? You see them trying to infiltrate our communities and destroy us from the inside out. We've seen it with Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've seen them constantly try to in integrate or infiltrate and destroy from the inside out. And that's one of the different tactics that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, has written, written books about. Divide and conquer. They still use the same tactics that they wrote books about. How do you think they got you waiting at the table for crumbs to fall off of you? Because they've divided your household and pulled you away from your heritage, so now you forgot who you are, and now you're waiting on them to give you your little stimulus check, to give you your child support, to give you your, your uh, welfare check. You're waiting for them uh, uh, you're waiting for them to give you crumbs off the table, not knowing that you got a rich heritage. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Seminole Native Indians, not knowing that the kingdom of heaven is yours. But yet you want to stay here and try to try to try to gather together crumbs from the so-called white men's table. This is Matthew chapter 13. And verse 36, then Yahweh sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the man of, is the son of man, for our Lord Yahweh The field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sold them is the devil, which is where you get these rappers, which is where you get these, these, uh, these rappers, these athletes, these pastors, they've been set up by the devil to deceive you. The enemy who sold them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. So they try to tell you that heaven and hell happen when you die. That's not true. When you die, you go up to the heavenly father and your, your spirit is back at rest. And every third or fourth genera generation, you're sent back to the earth in a different body through your same seed line. But heaven and hell comes at the end. And hell technically isn't even a real place. It's a condition. So heaven is within you, but it's referring to when our Lord calls up his elect. When he calls up his, his one third of the nation of Israel you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Seminole Native Indians. The kingdom of heaven is, is within you. But hell is gonna be, hell is, is, is what they call the second death. Which is when those thermonuclear missiles start hitting America and turn the whole landmass of America into a, 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 into burning sulfur, into pitch, liquid fire. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so it will be at the end of this age. 
the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And I'll get Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Now when, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of the heavenly father, Yahweh, would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of the heavenly father does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed the kingdom of the heavenly father is within you. John chapter 14 and verse 23. It reads, Yahweh shall answer. Yahweh shall answer and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and will come to him and make our home with him. So they were asking when the kingdom of the heavenly father would come and our Lord made it very very clear that that kingdom of heaven is within you and if you keep the words of the heavenly father the heavenly father's only begotten son Yahweh and the heavenly father would come and make their home with you meaning your temple as our Lord tells us in first Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Heavenly Father and that the Spirit of the Heavenly Father dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of the Heavenly Father, the Most High will destroy him. For the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple you are. So if you defile your temple, if you destroy your temple, that's showing that you don't care about the body and the spirit that the Lord blessed you with. So if you destroy your own body, what do you think the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son is going to do when they return to this earth? As our Lord tells us, reap for the Spirit. So like you sow for the Spirit. This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of the Heavenly Father abides forever. So by you doing the things, so by you doing the things that the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, has taught us, those who do the will of the Heavenly Father abide forever. But if you if you sow for the flesh, meaning you sow to please your flesh, every time you wake up, you gotta reach for something that makes you feel good. Every time you go to sleep, you gotta reach for something that makes you feel good that makes your body feel good. In turn, you sowing for the flesh is gonna reap destruction because our Lord tells us that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven.